What's up, y'all? This is Josh, part of Static Link, coming at you from New York City, Scratch DJ Academy. Today, we're going to talk about how to make your kick drums sound better and hit harder. So last video, we talked about with my boy Dan over at Submarine Studios, how to make your snare drum really hit a lot harder. This week, we're going to focus on how to make your kicks rumble and really knock at the club. So for today's listen, we're going to focus primarily on Ableton. Uh, as you can see, I got a session here that's already queued up, ready to go. Uh, we have the original sound file right here, and the song we're going to be working with today is actually called Boss Shit, and it's a recent record that I released that featured Mighty Haiku. We released the record for free download, and it was featured on EDM.com. Now, the reason I'm coming at you and the reason I'm teaching you about bass drums and kick drums today and how to make your 808s really ring out is that's one of the things that the EDM network really focused on when we dropped the record. A lot of the feedback was about how hard the drums really hit out. So I'm going to show you all some tips and tricks on a big question I get asked all the time here at the Academy on how to make the drums really knock. So what I have today is I have the original file that we used. And as you can see here, a bunch of different tracks. I think I have about 54 pieces of audio in there total. But what we're really going to focus on today is just the kick portion of the, the file. A lot of times I hear a lot of my students asking, where can I get good solid kick drums at? And Ableton actually comes packed full with a lot of different stock sounds. And the cool thing about this particular project is we actually used one of the stock sounds uh, that were in Ableton already, which is our, our Kick 606 right down here on the bottom in our drum rack, as you can see on this channel right here. As you can see, we have two different parts. Uh, the idea behind the kick drum was we want the initial punch, right? So you're standing in front of the speakers, you feel it hits your chest. And then we want the ring out, what makes your shirt shake when you're in the club, right? So two different parts, so that's what we want to focus on. So I have the punch, and this is our kick. It's playing right here, as we can see. So what I'm going to do, actually, is I'm going to go ahead and add an 8-band parametric EQ on the channel. And that's one of the stock plugins that actually comes in Ableton Live. Now, I use a lot of the stock plugins, even though a lot of people are, are kind of against them, but I think you can get a lot out of them, and they're, and they're fast and easy to access on the go. So what you have here, if I play this back, we're going to notice down here on our 8-band parametric EQ, it shows an analysis of the audio waves, right? And we have this kind of mountain looking thing. We can see where our sub frequencies down here are really standing out and they're peaking up. You see this is 12 decibels, negative 12 decibels, which is the volume. So what I want to do, because I'm only looking for the punchiness, is I want to cut out all the sub frequencies. And the sub frequencies I'm going to focus on are between 16 and 100 hertz. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and put a high pass filter or high pass uh, band on here and I'm going to eliminate all of the EQs there. Actually, let me change this here. And we, we want a hard, hard, hard high pass filter on there. We want to eliminate all those, all those cutoffs because there's two different kind of filters. So what I want to focus on as this is playing back is I want to look here and I want to see where the audio is peaking at because that's going to be our, our hit, that initial uh, punch in the chest. Uh, that you're going to feel. So I cut out my sub-frequencies, and now I'm going to focus on the resonance or cue point. I'm going to go ahead and boost this up right here. And as you can see, we can already feel the kick drum hitting a little bit harder than normal. But we also get some muddiness sound there, and the muddiness usually comes from about two to 300 hertz. And as you heard in the last video with Dan at Submarine Studios, same thing with the, the snare drum there. We want to eliminate that muddiness sound. We want it to sound real crisp. We want it to really stand out. So what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to focus on my second point of our EQ here, and I'm going to lower and cut out some of those frequencies. Now, if you notice, when I select number two here, we have, we're focusing on about 200 hertz in that range. All right, so now if we play this back, let's hear how it sounds. All right. So you can already tell it's already hitting a lot harder. We have our before. As you can see, real muddy sounding. Doesn't sound quite as tight, as tight as sound as crisp. And then we have our after. Now you might say, there's not a lot of bass there. It's kind of real thin sounding. But that's the idea. We only want to focus on that initial punch. So now this is the part where we add in our 808. So now I'm going to solo out our 808 here, all right? And as you notice, on the 808 here, it's just a WAV file. We have no other plugins, nothing that we're associated with in at all. So I'm going to go ahead and play that for you right now. All right, kind of hard to hear. You have the, the low, the rumble, all that kind of stuff, but we really want to make that sound tighter as well. 
So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna kind of do the same thing. I'm gonna first add my eight band parametric EQ again. So usually I only need two points for this. I really don't use all the other points as far as resonant points on the EQ. So I'm gonna do the same thing. I'm gonna add in a hard uh, high pass filter on the EQ here. And we're actually gonna cut off at about 300 Hertz. Now you may ask why 300 Hertz? Well, it's important to have a little bit of bleed between the kick drum and the 808, right? So I wanna focus on that punch, but I wanna have like a gradual roll off to where it kind of meshes together. So I'm focusing on that right now. So I, I have this rolled out at about 300 Hertz. So if we play this now, it's a little more bassy, but it's also a little bit harder to hear. So some of you might say, well, it's not even gonna stick out very much. Well, that's where you can use this little trick that I picked up over time. One of the things that I really like to do is add a saturator, which is another plugin that comes into Ableton. With the saturator, it actually boosts harmonic frequencies and allows some of the sounds that are drowned out to really stick out. Now, it really doesn't matter if you use the sine fold uh, option, but it's one that I really like because it still has the bite and the attack, but it's not overly done, it's not overly distorted, which I really like. So what I usually do is I'll put the drive up, and usually I start pretty high. I'll, I'll bring it up to about eight decibels or so. And then I lower my output, all right? So I lower the output down to about five decibels. So if we play this back now, So as you can see, you can really hear more of that bass it really sticks out. And then I'll go in and I'll adjust it, may bring down the drive a little bit, depending on the feel of the song. More of a hip hop bass type song like this one, I'll probably use less of the drive, make it stick out a little bit, but just want it to have a low undertone. Uh, something that's maybe more of a higher style electro type track that really want that bass to stick out and sound electronic and distorted. I'll use more of the drive. I'll maybe turn it up to eight, nine, ten 10 uh, decibels to really make it stand out. So if we play these together now, actually, uh, let me, I'll do before and after. So we have a before on the kick. Right? And now we have our after. So even more of a rumble, even more of a feeling. Now the last piece that I added to the puzzle has to do a lot with Ableton stereo imaging. And what I mean by stereo imaging is how that sound is spread across the stereo spectrum, how it, it interacts with each speaker. Ableton puts a really nice tool in for this, it's called the utility tool. And this is the very last step that I use with my kick drums. And as you can see, I really don't have very many plugs, plugins on them. Um, actually, let me redo that. And as you can see, this is the last step that I do on my 808s and my bass uh, to make them stand out. And you can see I don't have very many plugins on there. I'm not using a lot of effects. I like to keep the organic sound that the synthesizer creates. So with the utility tool, I bring down the width. And what the width does is the spread of the sound between the two speakers in the stereo spectrum. And I usually bring it down to about 30% because I want the sound to stick right in the middle of the mix. I want it to be the underlying driving tone. I don't want it to be spread very wide. I don't want it to sound very, very wide. But at the same time, I don't want it to sound very narrow. So I usually do about 30% or so. And what this does is this allows us to kind of cut through the middle of the mix and really stick out. So we can kind of hear it there a little bit. It doesn't, very, it doesn't really change the sound very much but it helps uh, bring out the 808 on, on the final product. So now together, if we play them back to back. Right? We have the initial punch with the 808 ring out. And just to give you guys a little reminder, this is what it sounds like beforehand. Got a big kick, but a lot of that bass is being canceled out. And here it is again with our EQ. More rumble, more feel. One thing I really focus and tell my students uh, in the beginner classes is to really pay attention to our master fader. And if you notice during this entire lesson, we were at about negative six dB, or about 
halfway down on our master channel here. And the reason we do that is we want to create and leave some headroom so we can really maximize our mix. And when it comes to the final process of the mixing and mastering portion, we can use a, a maximizer and a limiter and, and really bring up the sound to make it sound loud and full. It's a very important tip, especially when doing your kick drums in 808s. It's something that I really live by. All right, that's been today's lesson on how to EQ a kick drum and make it stick out in your mix. I'm Josh, part of Static Link, also one of the instructors at the Scratch DJ Academy here in New York. I want to thank you all for tuning in. Peace. I am gifted with it, like Christmas time. And that's not my shit, but that bitch is mine. Oh, that's your own? That's my own too. I like to mix it up, like Pro Tools. I'm drinking whiskey cups, like old school. You're drinking Yeager out of paper like the Rose School.